The outlaw life is a rough and tumble one. So no, we aren't proud of everything we did in Red Dead Redemption 2. But in our defense, a lot of it wasn't up to us. We simply did what we had to do and followed along for the ride. Here are the worst things Red Dead Redemption 2 made us players do, whether they wanted to or not. Mr. Thomas Downs? You owe me money. Thomas Downs wasn't a bad guy. In fact, he was kind. He raised money for the charitable organization of New Hampshire. He could be seen in the town of Valentine, giving money to the poor. He had a wife and a son, a farm, and some land. He wasn't living a fancy life by any stretch of the imagination, but for a while, what he had was enough. Unfortunately, hard times at the farm, and Thomas Downs was too proud of a man to let his wife and son live in squalor. Instead, he borrowed some money from Leopold Strauss, the money man in Arthur's gang, so that his family was fed and so that he could try to get things back on track. But he got Sick. He couldn't work, and because he couldn't work, he couldn't pay back the loan. Arthur wound up beating this man, viciously. He rode up to his farm and demanded that he pay the money he owed, and when he didn't, Arthur sent him a message. Thomas Downs didn't survive long after that. Whether disease finally did him in or Arthur's beating did, we'll never really know. All we do know is that he paid one hell of a price for that collection visit. You got tuberculosis. I'm really sorry for you, son. It's a hell of a thing. The town of Valentine was doing just fine before Arthur Morgan got there, and it's safe to say he didn't make the best first impression when he arrived either. He started a fight at the local saloon, got incredibly and unforgivably drunk at that same saloon, ran from local law enforcement, and ended up spending a night in jail. All of that was before the robbery. Why did Arthur rob the bank in Valentine? It was another one of the gang's brilliant ideas and their never-ending struggle for freedom from the vicious claws of American civilization. Welp, like most of the gang's plans, things went south fast. Instead of slipping in and out, Arthur caused a stir and drew far too much attention. He had to leave the bank of Valentine shooting and escaping on horseback, hoping and praying that no one tailed him back to camp. A lot of lawmen died during that robbery. Some innocent people probably did too, but it was for the greater good, right? Soon Arthur would be long gone, living it up somewhere exotic. Before the year is out, we are going to be harvesting mangoes in Tahiti. Little Jack Marston didn't ask to live the life of an outlaw. He was born into it. His daddy was an outlaw, his mama was an outlaw, and Jack Marston wasn't anything but a kid who got mixed up with the wrong people. He didn't have a choice. To say that Arthur took it very personally when the Braithwaite kidnapped him would be the understatement of the century. Get down here now, you inbred trash! He'd been running scams on them and the Greys in Lemoyne, trying to pit them against each other, trying to play both sides. Another one of Dutch's schemes. But they caught on before too long. The Greys killed Sean right there in the streets, so Arthur killed them. When he got back to camp, Abigail was a mess and Jack was gone. If there's one thing you should know about Red Dead Redemption 2 is that every action has a reaction. Arthur's reaction? The merciless slaughter of an entire wealthy family. He killed every one of old Mrs. Braithwaite's sons right in front of her, and then he set the entire mansion ablaze. The cherry on top, they didn't even have Jack anymore. Mrs. Braithwaite had passed him off to a crime boss in Saint Denis, but the deed was already done. The woman apparently died in the fire of her own accord. Seems she couldn't go on without her flesh and blood. There's a lesson there. Somehow, Arthur got the bright idea that he could pull off something more elaborate than an old-fashioned bank heist. Riverboats are full of gamblers, gamblers have money, and the dealers take it from them. There would be all sorts of riches aboard that boat, and with enough to his name, Arthur could finally disappear. Still, there were an awful lot of moving parts here. He had to lie his way in, he had to cheat without being caught, he had to have a man on the inside. A whole lot of chances for the job to go wrong. And sure enough, it did. Javier stole a uniform from a man, and before too long, that same man emerged in nothing but his long johns. He outed Arthur. It wasn't long before the bullets started flying. Mr. Morgan did a number on that ship, and he killed a whole lot of men trying to find a way out. But sometimes, the easiest way out is the most obvious one. He was on a boat in the middle of the water. So he jumped and got away again by the skin of his teeth. Hello, Arthur. Mary Linton was like one of the many banks Arthur had robbed over the years. She was a remnant of the past he could never quite escape, no matter how much distance he put in between. Just as the law followed, so did Mary, in letters, in visits to whatever town he happened to be holed up outside of. She reminded him of what he could have been had he followed the straight and narrow. But unlike the law, she found room to forgive. She wanted Arthur to leave it all behind and run away. Run away with me, Arthur. Run away right now and don't look back. 
If only he could have. Arthur saw what happened to Jack just for being around the gang. He got taken. He could have been killed. The same thing could have happened to Mary if she'd gotten caught up in everything. Not that the thought wasn't appealing, to just get on a train and vanish, live life and be in love, but it would be a life on the run, and that wouldn't have been fair to her. So Arthur said no. The gang was wanted, and until that wasn't the case, there was no normal life to be had. Mary Linton climbed aboard a streetcar and told him she'd write. Then she was gone. I'll write you. The outlaw life stole so much from Arthur. It stole his freedom, making it hard to enjoy a drink without having to survey the room. It even stole his shot at love. He never did get Mary back. He never did settle down. He never had the opportunity. But by far, the worst thing it did was steal Arthur's friends, because living life on the run meant living out of bounds. He couldn't just go from robbing banks to working at the general store. A normal job isn't an option. Robbing banks is the job, and you just keep doing it. The job in Saint Denis was never going to pan out. The city was too big. It had way too much law. Everything had to go exactly to plan. But nothing ever goes to plan, and this didn't. Arthur lost Hosea. The Pinkertons shot him in cold blood, and all Arthur could do was watch. Then he lost Lenny. He and Arthur were scrambling over the rooftops looking for a way out. Some more Pinkertons poured out of the doors and shot him on sight. Arthur didn't have time to mourn. Not when he wasn't sure he'd survive himself. All he could do was run and shoot. Beating her husband right in front of her? That wasn't all the torture Arthur put poor Edith down through. He went back to collect the rest of that loan her husband took out. She wasn't too happy about that. But he found out much later that the Downs family was in dire financial straits. Even worse than it seemed at first. Arthur happened upon Mrs. Downs in Annersburg. She'd propositioned him without realizing who he was. She'd turned to being a cool girl to pay the bills. When Arthur recognized her and she recognized him, she was embarrassed and furious. Maybe I could go. Well, maybe you could just leave us all alone. He ran into her a few more times, and after finally convincing her that he was truly sorry for what he'd done, she accepted his help. Arthur saved her son from a life of toilsome labor in the Annisburg mines. He gave her family money to start over. Take it. No. I ain't looking for forgiveness. It ain't about that. But don't forgive me. Just take the money and get out of here, please. Later in life, it seems her family opened up a number of businesses, including some golf courses, according to the Blackwater Ledger. Arthur's money might have been the push they needed to achieve the American dream, but his road to redemption was littered with many more unexpected turns. Arthur knew Dutch was starting to lose it when he refused to rescue John. After the botched bank robbery in Saint Denis, John Marston was caught by the law and locked away. There was talk that they might hang him. Abby Gale was understandably distraught. Arthur wasn't much sure that Jack understood, but it didn't feel right to not try and get the boy his daddy back, and maybe, just maybe, give them all a chance at something normal. So he devised a plan with Mrs. Adler. Arthur would secure himself a hot air balloon, fly his way to the island where John was being held, and shoot every guard he had to in order to bring John home. Arthur accomplished his goal, but an innocent man had to die so John could live. The balloon pilot, Mr. Bullard, seemed like a good enough guy. This is my friend I told you about, Mr. Morgan. Ah, yes, Arturo Bullard. At your service, sir. At your service. Arthur had got him caught up in a fight he had had with the O'Driscolls. There was a lot of history there, and Mr. Bullard wasn't a part of it, but the O'Driscolls shot him dead. Arthur always seemed to bring death and destruction no matter where he went. This time was no different. You got that poor bastard killed for his troubles. I kind of liked him. The Wapiti should have never been a part of the gang's mess. They were, for the most part, a people of peace. Rain Falls didn't want war. His son Eagle Flies, however, felt the noose of the US government wrapping around the tribe's neck. The army was encroaching on the territory, seizing their land. They saw an opportunity to respond, to fight back. And Dutch? Well, Dutch just saw an opportunity. Dutch became convinced that the only way the gang could shake the Pinkertons was to create a large enough distraction so the law couldn't help but let them all slip away. He ginned up the Wapiti, telling them it helped them fight out from underneath the oppressive fist of the government, and out of respect to Rain Falls, Arthur trailed along, if only to make sure Eagle Flies was kept safe. He failed, Eagle Flies lost his life saving Arthur's, and Arthur let Dutch sacrifice Rain Falls' only remaining son so he could run another one of his scams. Arthur had to take Eagle Flies back to his tribe's camp, and he had to see the look on his father's face. My son. You know how the story ends. The Pinkertons turned up at the gang's last camp just before it could erupt into a civil war. Arthur managed to sneak away and help John escape, sending him off to be with Abigail and Jack somewhere else, and he got to see one last pretty sunset. John Marston took care of Micah, who'd been selling the gang out the entire time, but that happened years later. Arthur should have shot him where he stood from the get-go, though. He'd had no problems gunning down so many men whose names he didn't even know. Men with families, men with paths, and men who would have had futures if not for crossing paths with Arthur. 
But Mike, it was something else. He took pleasure in it. He needed it. Everything about him from the way he talked You're not better than me, Morgan. To the way he carried himself, it all stunk to high heaven. What is wrong with you? I don't like religious types. He's ill. Arthur should have known he was the traitor in their midst all along. Had Arthur been able to kill him sooner, before he could infect Dutch's mind with his venomous tongue, who knows what the future could have held for the Vandalin gang. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.